Time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I have to begin uh, this this episode with an apology. I actually had filmed quite a bit yesterday for this game, um, and I just deleted the whole thing. Reason being is because I'm a creature of habit, and what I what I normally do is after I film, I'll put it, take it from the camera, and put it onto my computer, my personal computer, and then I'll delete everything off of the camera. Um, ne before I film next time. That's kind of the ooh, the habit I've developed in terms of filming these. Uh, so I came I came home from work today and I deleted everything off the camera, but I forgot I hadn't actually put it onto uh, the the computer yet. Because of the rate, that the, the amount of time this game takes me to do, I don't usually have an extra amount of time by the time I'm done in order to, to flip it uh, to the computer. And also, it doesn't seem like Maybe because we have so many players and so many, and all those players are also divided into a number of empires. There's a lot of different little stories going on, so the amount of progression uh, in one given story uh, in between in between turns is not as great, and so it doesn't make for maybe as compelling of uh, a video to to watch all these little inch inchworms go across the map. Um, time to time, so I've been trying to combine a couple and maybe skip ahead a little further. So uh, I, I'll try and take stock of what what maybe happened last time. I don't think it was a super dramatic turn. There was there were some happenings, but I don't know if there was any like there was no combats or anything like that. So it shouldn't be terribly. Big. I think you're just you're you're missing out on a lot of blather. I did do a lot of blather. Okay, so despite the lack of depth of activity in any particular empire, there's always great breadth. To this game there's always a lot of things that are going on um, so the big first thing that happened last time was that we we dealt out new um, seven wonders cards it, it was actually last last time the time that I deleted uh, as it was sort of a harbinger of change it seems like the the status quo of the game which is you know milky on top uh, flush on the bottom trying to claw his way out feels like it's changing now um, for a couple of reasons, but I think maybe a, a clearer way to go over what you missed um, due to my error would be to go person by person. So Flush, big news for Flush is he got this huge stack of units now and he has boats. So I was talking about a reverse flood water I think once upon a time uh, where the land that is Flush heads out into the ocean um, and then across the world. It's going to happen probably this turn. You know, I, I don't know why he would do anything other than maneuver. So his fortunes seem like they could be changing. Now what are his what are his scoring potential? Still not that much. You know, even if he he takes the oceans, he's gonna be scoring two more victory points a turn. Um, if he has the do, do, if he dominates the world's oceans, which you know, is is maybe going to be enough to keep him from elimination. Uh, though we still have a ways to go before that. Almost, I mean, we're about about halfway there. Um, but it could be enough. It's not going to, you know. I guess what I'm saying is, the the card he has these great forces with does not have a huge scoring potential. Um, reason why it's it still might be enough though is because Cat is not moving anywhere. She's not doing anything. She has these pirates here. They don't have boats, so it's really hard for them to do anything piratey. She's not scoring any points at all. She was one of the f of the th two, yes, yeah, three, three who were unable to start new empires. We had three people: Little Red, Flush, and Cat, as in Cat, um, who weren't able to start new empires last turn. Cowboy was, so I guess we can talk about Cowboy. Cowboy, he started the turn. He actually got his whole turn done before anyone else could do anything. And all he did was he started an empire and produced. Um, so not bad. Oh, one thing I decided was to give people coins, uh, money to compensate them for losing their, their culture cards, which is kind of what these Seven Wonders cards are. They're, they're even more metaphysical than culture, though, I think. Um, just cause I, so one, what I explained last time that I deleted um, is one of the... The culture cards aren't... They're not a simulation, really. Um, 
or the, the fact that they lose them, I guess that's what I'm talking about, is not a simulation, really, I don't think. And it's not really a gameplay balancer. It, it actually is a disadvantage to the person who um, has to discard an empire. You know, there, usually if you have to discard an empire, it's because you're in bad straits anyway, so it's kind of insult to in injury. But I really liked the cycling of it. I liked the cycling of the cards, and that's the whole reason I did it, was just to have a, a reason for them to cycle out. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's what those are there for. Uh, I'd, I was feeling bad for the people who <laughs> who had to, to suffer as a result, though, so I decided to give them money, pay them off, pay pay down their hurt. Um, so let's talk about Melky. Melky's Minoans are in, all, all of his civilizations are kind of becoming impotent. He was, he only scored five points the last turn, which is, you know, would be great for flush, but you know, he was scoring five just on his Minoans. His Minoans no longer have water dominance, nor do they have the most ships. Uh, so he's no longer scoring a bunch of points. They're just scoring one on the homeland. And he doesn't really have um, a good way to to get them to, to get the production necessary in order for them to start scoring again. Uh, reason being, you can only produce one thing per per space you own, right, per land space, and he only, he only has one land space, and he doesn't even pull in very much money. I think he gets a, a the last time he produced, he got a net of two dollars, which is not going to be enough, um, and then now he has, you know, he has Cowboy here, oh, and Cowboy, he started his empire right there, too, so right next to, to Melky, um, direct competitor to Melky in a lot of ways, there's an interesting, like, kind of pattern here. We have Runt, the north and south, and then Milky on either side, and Cowboy, this kind of column in the middle. Um, reason why Flush was able to do that, to, to produce a bunch in one space, one, he had a lot of money saved up, but two, he had a couple administrators here. I Really, only one was all that's necessary to remove that one unit per space limit. Um, so very good for Flush. So Melky's Minoans, which were his big score, are becoming impotent. His Babylonians, which are, you know, they have a lot of different potentials. They're they're really hindered by competition at this point. Um, I mean, he needs them to be able to spread out to get the Asia points. You know, they can score two points on having a majority of Asia, but he's got cowboys sitting on his borders. He's got flood, or runt coming in. It's just it's too prohibitive. Um, yeah, so not a lot of chances there for him. And then the early fins, he doesn't want to get rid of the early fins because they have the black counter set, but, and they don't have a lot of competition where they are. The problem is the black counter set, uh, there's not a lot uh, of black counters. They're stronger than the other counter sets, but there's, there's fewer of them. And so the early fins really need to be able to spread out. One of their main abilities is that they can go through the tundra and score that, which a lot of people can't. So it would be great if he could spread them out and just, you know, be raking in. Not even that many points. The, the most they can get is three, but they're not able to do that. So what, they, what they'd be good for for him is a hammer he can use against other people. The positioning, you know, to help his other empires, positioning of them is not so great. I mean, he could distract Runt, but Runt's not even a, that big of a, an issue for him at this point. So, looks like Milky's going to be losing his, his point balance, um, which is evidence that the scoring last time, both Giraffe and Runt scored close to 10. I think Giraffe got 10, Runt got 9. They used cards to kind of double their, their scores. Uh, but Giraffe's looking good. She still has India. Um, I think she she actually she scored on the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she had Rizik the Red. Rizik the Red went to the Labyrinth and met William Shakespeare. And I guess William Shakespeare wasn't very hard to impress, but um, Rizik the Red, it was a white against a red challenge, which needed an 11 or better, no, 12 or better, <laughs> I think is what it was, rolled an 11, uh, should have been able to get an amaze result if she'd rolled, you know, 7, which is the, the most common roll, would have had an amaze result, didn't get that, but still was able to pass, so tied up Cowboy for there, the, the Labyrinth, no one's scoring on it right now because they are equal um, in distance, and 
what else did giraffe do? Giraffe's romans are kind of flagging. They're, they're not able to spread as quickly as they want. They have kind of a production issue. Um, they, have, they have more units than they can really support uh, while having any sort of substantial growth. So they're kind of going slowly. But the Harappans are doing great. They became Hindus. I don't know if that was last time or another time. Um, Runt, Runt's doing nice. Uh, the Amazonians, the Amazons, uh, are a very strong empire. They're scoring full full points every turn now. They're the the world. They have the dom They were dominating the world. I don't know if they are anymore. Nope. It looks like the Harappans now have the most in the world. Um, Pharaonic Egyptians also looking good. You know, there's not a lot to report for Runt. Uh, she's really just dominating the world. Um, is she getting enough points for it? Maybe, maybe not. I almost forgot to talk about Little Red. Little Red, uh, he sent both of his adventurers to the labyrinth. They had this trupper truck duel. You can see that it's still there, which tells you they both failed. Um, his Prince Waller Blatt respawned because he is a time prisoner and so he can't really die. Though I ruled he can die of old age, you know, in the changing of era there. Um, his other guy, I forget who it was, Enrak the Fury, yeah, Berserker guy, also failed. So, yeah, he's just kind of stuck until he can trade uh, in order to progress so that he can get more units. I don't know if you remember, but he's really hurt in his counter set. He's not able to access any of his higher level units. Even after he progresses, you know, he's only going to be able to pull in three more. Um, he's got some great land. I mean, he can really pull in the money. If he scored on having the most money, that would be excellent. But he's just not able to pull in a lot of units. He will be able to trade now with the Harappans now that they're finally close enough. He was he was disadvantaged by being too far away. Um, that's all that's going on with him. Oh, big thing with Runt. Forgot. Uh, she's almost into Era 2, and that's going to change things a lot. Once you're in Era 2, that opens up a lot more um, different empires that people can start. And so we're... We're going to be seeing some new blood, and uh, that's going to change the dynamic because some, you know, the the empires are supposed to get better as they go forward in time, in general. So this is going to be the last time, the last time we have cards uh, done like this. As I was putting, as I was uh, having them pick their cards, actually, as I was uh, having them choose their actions for the turn. Um, because I actually did it in, I do it in two waves. It's just easier for me to, th to think about that way. Um, I came up with a better way <laughs> to do these cards that addresses a lot of problems in terms of, uh, you don't have to have this meta, it, it lessens the, the metaphysical connection between empires because this game has this odd thing where, you know, if a player is playing two empires, those empires aren't going to really bother each other as much as if they were played by different people. There's this, there's this weird coordination, this kind of, and it, and it can be like empires that are very far apart. So like giraffes empires are, which is kind of interesting in a way, but I, I don't know. Uh, so I was, I was doing a similar thing with these cards, but then I was like, uh, I had the problem with the cycling. I still wanted to do the cycling, but I didn't like how heavy-handed it was. Um, but then I was like, uh, as I was putting down these these chits on the cards, I was like, well, why, why not just, you know, when they get a card, they can decide which empire it goes to, right? It makes so much more sense. And then it's like, then they can actually just trade like normal. Like, so if if you want to buy something from a particular empire, you can. Uh, you know, if they're in their their range, you can just buy that that object. Uh, the the problem, well, no, I don't think it's even a problem in terms of the wreaths, because the wreaths can be assigned to different people, and if an empire has a certain number of wreaths, it can it can't, because the civilized actions are done by an empire. So, yeah, yeah, it totally works. It it, ma it makes everything just kind of fall into place doing it that way. So. I'm going to play out the turn with them like it is, but then I'm going to have everyone assign their cards. I'm not going to have them assign these coins, though, uh, especially since they were kind of the the consolation prize for for those that that um, lost all their cards. Still going to be unfair for those. Still going to be unfair for Little Red Cowboy and Cat, as in Cat, but what can you do? Things are really looking up for Flush. He now has an empire, not really necessarily 
a, a new empire, not necessarily where he would want to go. Uh, he almost decided to just wait and not start an empire, uh, wait until maybe someone was an heir too, but it's a pretty decent empire, and, and so he's just going to go for it now. Um, but that's going to put him in direct conflict with Little Red, which is really bad for Little Red right now, because this is what he has here, and they're not built up enough to do anything, and they're low in progress. Um, flushes, flushes Chi in, who only get to come out in Arrow 1 if the Chao, which are, um, or they're just Chao, it's not Chao, it's Chi in and then Chao, uh, if the Chao are on the map, and they are. Um, yeah, so he has, a, he has an advantage. We're going to be using a new combat results table. I, uh, went through some of my games and I found, I took the one from Imperium Romanum, uh, two. I actually have never played this game. I don't know anything really about this combat results table. It uses ratios, but it's from around the time period, so I assume it's decent. Uh huh. So we got 9 plus 14 to 2, but it gets a defensive bonus of 3 is 5. So it's a, it's a, we'll say it's a 3 to 1. It's close enough. 3 to 1 right there. So we're going to be using that column. We'll just roll a 1d6, 4, and we look at 4 on that column here, a quarter of quarter d slash e. So I'll have to interpret what that means and read some things. I'll be right back. Great. So that means um, he loses a fourth as many units as the defender lost. So the defender's losing all its units, right? So two, two strength points. And he's got has to lose a fourth of that. It's gonna be 0.25. I um, guess we'll round that up to, oh, we can actually use points, okay. So it'll be 0.25 of, of two is 0.5, so we'll round that up to one. And so you'll have to lose this guy right here. That, that's fair. Kaz and Cat is also uh, going to be able to start an empire. And she, it's kind of interesting. She has two very kind of similar in a way empires. They're both um, the the least less specific empires. They can be started in any age. Uh, she got the pirate state. And now she has the free state. Now the free state they they score based on spaces they control and on wheat. So Kaz looking on the board for places that have a lot of wheat, and she's seen India. I mean. Uh, yeah, India, there's a lot of wheat right close to each other, and she only has one competitor there. Now, the problem with the free state is they, they don't get horses and they don't get boats, so she's going to have to do everything just with infantry and archers. Um, that would be kind of hard. She gets the advantage of being able to convert units into her starting space. Um, hmm... Oh, you know what? China is also pretty nice. She could take a chunk out of um, out of Little Red there. But what about it was out the adjacent to non-neutral area? Couldn't she just take? Could she just take this? I wonder. If she could just make Flush's state a free state. Let me look at that closer, and then. That's probably what she would do, because she's going to get a bunch of free units out of it. Money on top of that, and yeah. Oh, but those units, I guess she would just have money. Uh. Now it says without capital, so she can't take flushes. She could take one of these, though. Those aren't capitals, and those would be nice. But then she'd be up against flush and little red for China, and the space there. Hmm... I think she's leaning towards either China or India. She might she might go with China. There's a lot of wheat there, so even if she doesn't get the, the world, I think she will. Yeah. And that kind of works for her to be competing with Flush and Little Red because they're they're both low scorers like her. Yeah, I think she's gonna do that. She's gonna take she'll take uh, this space here, she gets a town out of it, Shantung, and she'll have some wheat to start out with. The flush wave has gone out, and it went right after Cowboy. Here, here are all the casualties from the fights. Uh, flush actually ended up... that's not right. 
Yes, yes. Flesh ended up losing more than Cowboy did, partially because he put he put people on all his boats, and so um, when one of his boats got sunk, the person who was on it, or the army that was on it, also got sunk. But he was able to take the Eastern Mediterranean Ocean and Carthage, uh, which is you know a big boon for him. Uh, and it's not the end of the world to be losing these units because he feels like he can bring them back. Uh, so flushes, flushes on the map. Before that maneuvering, we saw a lot of trading this app, this round. So um, as you, there's a there's a much wider spread in terms of progress. A lot of people have been going up, especially since I used the rule where if you trade at all, you're going to progress. Just because I I feel like that's that's truer to to the way ideas are formed through. Um, it, interacting and borrowing from other cultures rather than just generating. Um, I think if you look through uh, the innovations of, 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 a, of a given culture over time, more of them are going to be um, actually borrowing and ad, uh, borrow, borrowed adaptations from other cultures rather than just um, cut from whole cloth. Cowboy just did a suicide attack on Assyria. I don't think he was intending suicide, but he sent all his forces in there, killed everything there, but died uh, in the process. So the Hittites <laughs> didn't have a very good start. They're, they're now a, low, a lone army of chariots. The giraffe started the scoring out by, by playing Glory Pour Moi. That took um, both Ka, Little Red and Runt out of the scoring because they all have a smaller amount of wreaths than Giraffe. Everyone else got the score, but um, big upshot of all of that is Flush is no longer in it at the end of the point line. Cat now is, she only scored, she would have only scored one even if she was able to score, but she wasn't even able to score that one. So that puts her in the big, big danger zone. And Flesh, he took in four, I think, four points. Not too bad for, for compared to how he was doing. So he could be overtaking Cowboy and maybe Little Red as well on the point track. Uh, let's take a big overview on what's going on or what happened this time. Um, Run still in about the same place she was before. Little Red, he had a really rough turn. I mean, he had two new empires take away his his uh, Chinese hegemony. Um, Melky, we're seeing him decline slowly. You know, he still take he still took in five points this turn, um, but definitely not as dominant as he was. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens once all of these are distributed. I think I'm going to let the people who have these three three dollar chips buy the buy these cards here as a further consolation prize. It's not a full you know, it's not going to be the same as what they had. It's really unfortunate. But, you know, if you're changing rules as you go along, someone's going to get burned by that. I guess you could also get burned by die rolls. Uh, things aren't looking as good for Cowboy either. Cowboy was starting to take the o the seas. Uh, Flush kind of took him down. Yeah, at some cost to Flush, but, you know, Flush had a lot to start out with. His Hittites also didn't do very well. Softened up Melky, though. Um... You know, if he can capitalize with his his Phoenicians on that, then maybe that's good. But the Phoenicians don't even score on having land, so I don't I don't know what the purpose of that really was. I think he just wanted to do it. Um, giraffe things are looking really nice for her. I, I I foresee her being the next leader if if things stay as they are. Um, she's definitely pulling in more points than Melky right now. And she has kind of a, a more secure spot. The Romans aren't really in, in great danger. Though, you know, if Flush wanted to, he could come in and take Rome uh, with the Syracusians. But again, you know, he doesn't score on, on, on water or on land either. He just scores on water. So things are definitely changing. This has been a turn of change, these last two turns. The one that was deleted and the one that remains. And I'm sure next time we're going to be getting into Era 2. Uh, where you get to have these guys come in, these uh, these archers, they're amazing. They can ride horses and shoot a bow and arrow at the same time. Next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament.